Let's talk to Susan Hall and get some sense onto the show. Susan, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well indeed. Very well indeed. Did you enjoy the weekend? Oh, I did. It was wonderful. I loved watching the coronation. I'm a massive royalist. Yes, good. Well, um, I'm not sure about Sadiq Khan. I mean, he says he is, um, but he's now managed to get the police to apologise for arresting those uh, um, idiots from uh, Republic. Oh, Sadiq Khan. Sadiq Khan needs to get a grip. So many people are not feeling safe in London. Mm. We've just got this horrific wave of teenage murders. This has got to stop. He's got one year left as mayor, and he really has got to get the Met Police out of special measures and roll his sleeves up and get a grip of this because it's just not fair to Londoners. He's not looking after any of us. Well, that was a terrible milestone, wasn't it, to pass this weekend? More than 150 teenagers murdered in the capital since he became mayor. I know, absolutely awful. And, and while we hear this, um, <laughs> while we hear about teenagers dying on our streets, he's busy publicising his new book. Yeah. I mean, he's the police and crime commissioner. He needs to be taking it seriously. Well, he seems to be police and crime commissioner when it suits him, doesn't he? You know, huh. whenever there's anything wrong with the police, he has a go at them and says that he can't understand why they've had this culture for such a long time. He's been mayor for a long time while the culture has been going on. He's been mayor for seven years and people are feeling less and less safe on our streets. Um, he doesn't always support the police. Uh, he'll, he'll go, he'll bend with the wind and then he blames the government. Yeah. Uh, he really needs to spend his last year concentrating on sorting out the Metropolitan Police and allowing Londoners to feel safe again. Yes, I think it's so important because so many parts of London now you're seeing ridiculously lawless incidents you know for a long time i think they they've now arrested the particular gang that was that was doing it but people were having watches ripped off their arms in in sort of yeah. the west end in knightsbridge we had oxford street sort of under siege by gangs of people just running into shops and running out with go with goods stealing them you've got people being shot now in sort of drive-by shootings it's extraordinary but it's dreadful and the problem is the vulnerable uh, fear the police, but the villains don't. Mm. The criminals just do not fear them at all, and things have got to change. It's, I mean, Khan's all for carrot. I'm all for stick, I'm afraid. Yes. We've got to the point that these villains have to be locked up um, so our streets become safer again, because we cannot go on like this. We're on a slippery slope, and under Sadiq Khan, we're disappearing down it very, very quickly. Yeah. Got to stop. And what's your view of Sir Mark Rowley? What's he doing, and how's he doing? Actually, I have got a lot of time for Sir Mark Rowley. He appreciates the issues the police have got. At least he understands the issues um, and he's trying to deal with it. At the moment, I think he's still trying to get permission to sack officers mm. that are not up to uh, speed. And I think the Home Secretary is dealing with that. And I sincerely hope they give him those powers quickly because he's got to root out the 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 problems within the force yes. but we must forget he's got 45,000 staff this this should have been done a long while ago under Sadiq Khan it's an absolute disaster yeah and I think you're absolutely right but let's not forget he is supposed to be as well the sort of the top police officer in the land and so he doesn't just have to root out whatever the problems are inside of the force he has to actually make sure that it's fit for purpose as well and they're doing their jobs properly and I wonder as a result of this Republic arrest whether he's now undermined that by sort of saying oh we're really sorry because every protester now is going to say to a copper oh yeah what you're going to arrest me and then apologize to me tomorrow so I can sue you yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, look at look how well the coronation went. And nobody must underestimate the amount of work that the police did to make sure that it went off well. They had um, indications that rape alarms were going to be thrown at the horses. Well, that's terrifying on, yeah. the, on the basis that those horses, when out of control, become very dangerous in themselves. Not to forget there was a massive spectacle uh, of London for the whole of the world. So the, the police had a very difficult... Balancing yeah. act, if you Well, if, uh, if something had gone wrong, you know, the police would have been getting a far harder time than they're getting today because they yes. didn't actually stop it from happening. That's right. I mean, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem recently is, I mean, I will always depend, defend people's rights to, um, to 
to go out there and protest. Absolutely, I do. The problem we've had recently with people like Just Stop Oil and uh, and Extinction Rebellion is that they do such drastic things. They cause such chaos. And very often, you know, they're the same people that mm. belong to these different groups. Of course they are. The, we, the police must have been very nervous that they were going to suddenly do something like throw an, a, mm. a rape alarm under a horse, which would have caused absolute chaos. Well, there are, and also there are several things you have to take into account. You know, if the police are watching a group of protesters at, say, the Mall, which is the only place they weren't really allowed to go, um, you know, they could be distracted. They could be distracted from something more serious happening. And as I played out before, there was a massive protest against the King in Pal in Pall Mall and in Trafalgar Square. It wasn't as if they were silenced. They had their protest. In fact, I've got a, um, a note here from somebody who was there who says, my daughter and I were in Trafalgar Square on Saturday um, and they definitely didn't have their voices silenced. They'd taken up a large section of the pavement so we couldn't get near the procession and they were very loud chanting and shouting and waving very large flags. There were quite a lot of people with young children and it was quite scary. And you can't tell what individuals are going to do in that situation. No, I'm, I mean, clearly there's an issue over these people that were arrested, and I'm sure the police will deal with that. At the, at the end of the day, though, we all have to look at what a success Saturday was and how much of an impact that the police had on that. Um, and I applaud them for making sure that that day went off as well as it did. It was fabulous for us to watch and people around the world to watch. Yeah, no, I, I think you should be, we should be congratulating the police for doing a decent job because it did go off pretty much without any incident. It did go off without a hitch. And I know, and you know, exactly how much work goes into preventing things happening. Absolutely. Far more than the public will ever know. Yes. Because, um, unfortunately, lots of things have to be kept quiet for security reasons, mm. which we all need to understand. So I, I would applaud what the police did on Saturday. I'm sure other people will be looking into those arrests to, yes. to, to see how things could be handled differently another time. Exactly. But let's face it, we're not go please God, we don't have another event like the coronation mm. for many, many years. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, apparently at least normally 70 since the last one. I mean, it's going to be at probably at least 20, I suppose. Um, I've got this from somebody as well that you'll be interested in. Hi, Mike. As a serving police chief superintendent, I can categorically tell you that the vast majority of the issues facing policing in this country relates directly to poor leadership. I'm part of a dying breed of cops who strongly disagree with the woke nonsense that has infested policing and allowed neoliberal ideologies to take hold, driven by inexperienced virtue signalling chiefs. And then he says, P.S. I'm retiring shortly. We'll happily come on your show and speak to you about these issues if someone needs to speak out. So oh, that, here, I'll, here. I'll, I agree with that man or yeah. woman. I completely agree with that. Absolutely. Well, Too many times these, these woke issues get in the way and the, the lovely liberals are, are make excuses for all sorts of things that go on. We need proper policing back in London. Uh, Sadiq Khan has just got one year left of his mayoralty and he needs to let me while roll his sleeves up and start getting something done about it we do need common sense applied to this mike we really do everything is in such a mess yes it really is and i mean you know Rishi Sunak's trying to fix various things, parts of the uh, NHS, parts of, um, you know, the housing crisis that we've got in this country. Um, Keir Starmer's come out today. Apparently, he's going to be speaking to his top team, uh, and we can all imagine who they are. Um, he's going to be telling them that the public doesn't care about woke issues. Well, he's wrong about that, isn't he? Because we do. We're sick to death of it. That's yeah. what we are. Uh, we, ju we just need to go back to the basic common sense and, and certainly run London... Uh, with common sense in mind, we do have a housing crisis. It needs to be sorted out. Right. We have a major problem with policing and trust and confidence. We need to bring confidence of the public back to the Metropolitan Police. Mm. It's absolutely vital. It really is. Great to talk to you. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Susan Hall, I believe the time is flying like it is. She's the chair of the Police and Crime Committee in London with the terrible news, basically, that uh, 100